Welcome back. We are again at Algorithms. And in this video, we'll look into the complexity of matrix calculations. Matrices are used a lot in uh, computer science in programs. And it has, of course, a very special place because matrix calculations are rather time consuming, complex, and have a very high time complexity. So here we will have a look at how we deal with the matrix calculations. When we look at the classical matrix calculation, we can say that we have the procedure to multiply A with B, and we have two matrices here, and we have to see that the number of rows and columns fit each other in order to be able to do the matrix calculations. Basically, what we have as a matrix calculation in order to find C11, we have to multiply A11 plus B11 plus A12 multiplied by B21 plus A13 multiplied by 31. So basically, these are the calculations that we have to do for every element of the new matrix. So we have for the first matrix I is equal 1 to M. So we go uh, for the M rows in the first matrix. Then we have Cij is set to 0. So the basic number is 0. Then we go from Q from 1 to K. That's the second part. This is about the columns. And then we say that the Cij, we add to the previous one the different multiplications. So we're going, what we're doing here is for every element of the matrix, we're going to calculate that parameter. And we're always going to add AIQ times BQJ. So we're adding here in the first one, we have A11 times B11. That's the new element. So that becomes the new C11. Then we do this again for the next step. We add A12 multiplied with B21. That's the new C11. And finally, we add to this number A13 times B31. And that gives us the first element of our new matrix. And then we return for all of them the indexes or the elements of that matrix. When we look at the complexity of these matrix calculations, is in fact, when we look at the simplest algorithm, we're going to use what we call a brute force algorithm or a brute force approach. We are going to calculate that multiplication by doing all the different steps that we did before. And we can prove that we get here a complexity of big theta n to the third power. And n to the third power means that it's going up very quickly. Now, it's clear that when we're doing the matrix calculations that the n to the third power complexity is not really the best way that we can find the solution. And since matrix calculations are so important, there are different methods that have been developed just in order to have a lower time complexity. A first step what we can do is to go to the divide and conquer method. And with the divide and conquer method, we split the matrices in four sub matrices. Now, when we look at this, we have the new formula here, how to calculate those different values. And we're always making these matrices smaller and smaller, and then we find the final solution. But unfortunately, the time complexity when we do this with the divide and conquer method doesn't really add up. It doesn't improve the time complexity. Now, we're not going to discuss all the possibilities of the matrix multiplications here, but we can have a look at what are the different algorithms and what are their time complexities that we can consider.
And basically, over the years, a lot of different methods have been developed. And we find here the overview for an n times n matrix multiplication for four different ways of calculation. We have the naive, which is the one that we did before. Uh, there is the Strassen method, there is Vaslevska, and there is Legal. And when we look at those, we see, for example, that when we look at the naive and 100 times 100 matrix, we have to do 1 million calculations. And when we finally go to the method of Legal, we see that that 1 million number of calculations is reduced to 55,684 calculations. So that's quite an important step that we have. We see it in the graph, the naive, which is very steep, x to the third, the Strassen, the Vaslevska, and Legal, and all those different matrix all those different ways to calculate or to multiply those matrices lead to uh, very interesting results. So when we look at it even for a 10 by 10 matrix, the method of Legal is already very interesting. Of course, we have to select what method is the best for our system. We don't only have to consider time complexity, but also space complexity. And we didn't talk about that here. A type of matrices that we can look at are the 0, 1 matrices. Now, we've really seen this before. 0, 1 matrices are, in fact, only composed of zeros and 1. And we have, in fact, the Boolean product of those. And when we have the Boolean operators, we have the AND and the OR operators which are used to determine each new term. And we find that basically the time complexity is the same as the normal multiplication. So we have theta n to the third power. Now we have the procedure. Basically, everything is the same here. The only thing that changes is that we have to find the cij every term. We have to or add or a i q and b q j so we have here the plus which is replaced by the or and the multiplication with the and operators and finally at the end we find again the new matrix c which is composed of the parameters c i j depending on the size of the matrix the thing which is important are matrix chain multiplications. And matrix chain multiplications are in fact the multiplication of a chain of matrices. Now, what is here important is that we have to see what is the number of the calculations. And when we consider the matrices a1 to be a 50 times 15, A2 a 50 times 30, and A3 a 30 times 25. By the multiplication of A1, A2, and A3, we will get finally a 50 times 25 matrix. Now, we know that the matrix calculations comply with the associative rule. And we can combine the multiplications as we want. We can first multiply A1 with A2 and that product multiply with A3. Or we can first multiply A2 with A3 and then multiply A1 with that result. Now, what is very interesting to see here is that when we change the order, when we put those parentheses in a different place, we will get a number of calculations that is going to change. So it's very important to find a way to reduce the total durations of those matrix chain multiplications. Now, when we look at the multiplication, we see for the A1 times A2 times A3, we have 50 times 15 times 30, plus 50 times 30 times 25, which gives us a total of 60,000 calculations to multiply A1 with A2 and A3. 
Now, what happens if we do it differently, if we take the second solution? Well, when we take the second solution, we see that basically we only need half of the calculations. And it's very clear to see here that when we are talking about the order of those calculations, that we basically can find better ways to do these calculations to reduce the time complexity just by selecting which matrices I will multiply first and which ones next. So the associative rule can be used here to find better ways to reduce the time complexity. So that was what I wanted to tell you about matrix calculations. Matrix calculations are very important. We will see and we will discuss them later, some parts in this course and other parts in the course of algorithms. Now, in the next video, we will look into what we call algorithm paradigms. So this was the end of this video. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank you, and bye-bye.